Hi, this is Hitman SOS, and this is part three of my um, wrestlers who have only ever had one action figure um, video. Um, the first figure I'm going to show you is a uh, WWF Hasbro Ludwig Borger figure. Um, this is, I think, possibly the only Ludwig Borger figure that there's ever been. Um, it's actually a really rare figure. It's from Series 11, the very last series of uh, WWF Hasbro figures. Um, Ludwig Borger was uh, around um, kind of uh, during the, the mid to late 90s. Um, sorry, the kind of, uh, kind of early to mid 90s, should I say. Um, he was one of those guys who was around at the time when... Uh, you know, you had like they were trying to give Lex Luger a push, and uh, you know, Bret Hart was kind of becoming the top guy. And um, I just wasn't really interested in the WWF anymore. You know, I was getting older and uh, just didn't really care about wrestling anymore. Plus, wrestling was starting to really suck. And um, don't really remember much about this guy. Um, I do remember him having a feud with uh, Lex Luger. Um, Ludwig Borger was a, a Finnish guy, um, Finnish as in somebody from Finland. Um, I believe he was like a, a big celebrity in Finland, um, probably one of the only kind of celebrities that Finland have ever had, you know, outside of Finland. Um, but Ludwig Borger was kind of cool, if I remember. Um, you know, a big strong type of guy. <clears throat> Don't remember a whole lot about him. Um, he wasn't around for a huge amount of time. But this, I believe, could be the one and only um, Ludwig Borger figure that there's ever been. And it's a really rare figure too, a cool figure to have. Okay, next we got the Briscoe brothers. We got Jack Briscoe and Jerry Briscoe. So these guys were around way before I used to watch wrestling, so I don't really know a whole lot about them. Um, these are Jack's classic superstars figures. Um, these were actually chase figures. Um, it was kind of hard for me to get hold of these. Um, I believe I found one of them in a local store. Uh, the other one I had to buy off eBay because I couldn't find it anywhere. So um, Jerry Briscoe. Um, you know, he was around in the late 90s in the WWF, um, <clears throat> there was always like Patterson and Briscoe, um, you know, uh, kind of like two kind of backstage type guys who, uh, you know, I, I don't really remember a whole lot about it, but, um, Jack and Jerry, uh, they were a tag team, uh, you know, brothers, um, I think they may have had like their own wrestling organization I don't know what it was what it was called um, so Jack I believe was the older brother Jerry the younger brother um, Jack I believe was a little bit more proud didn't want anything to do with the WWF um, Jerry was more of an ass kisser and um, as long as you paid him he would kiss your ass uh, but yeah um, I believe these were two like Native American guys um, you know, um, I'm sure they were a great talent, um, although I don't remember all that much about Jerry Briscoe, Patterson and Briscoe in the late 90s, um, and Jack Briscoe is one of those guys I never really seen before, although I have heard of the Briscoe brothers. Okay, next we got uh, Jack's Classic Superstars. Uh, Ken Patura, Patara, not sure how you pronounce his name. Um, I believe he was um, on one of the, the earlier WrestleManias. One of those guys that um, I don't really remember. I mean, when this uh, figure came out, came out, I was like, didn't really know who he was. Um, kind of, I seem to remember looking on the internet to find out who he was, and I found out that. I've actually seen him wrestle on, I don't know, WrestleMania 3 or 4, maybe, I don't know, I can't even remember. But, <clears throat> um, you know, he was like, a, I think, an Olympic, uh, some kind of Olympic weightlifter, some kind of powerlifter or something. 
Um, probably wasn't a good wrestler. And, um, yeah, this, I believe, is probably the one and only Ken Patura, Patara figure that there's ever been. So, um, you know, not a guy that I ever really give a crap about, but, yeah, quite nice to see an action figure of somebody like that. Okay, next we have, uh, Bad News Brown. Um, so, I do remember Bad News Brown when I was a kid. Um, I didn't really care too much for Bad News Brown. He always come across as being a kind of mid-card kind of guy, not a particularly charismatic, exciting type of personality. Um, you know, I remember Roddy Piper having a match, I think it was WrestleMania 6, where Roddy Piper painted himself half black. Um, almost like he was playing my games with uh, Bad News Brown. Um, you know, kind of half black, half white type of, uh, you know, thing. Um, you know, Bad News Brown, I believe he has a reputation of being a real tough guy. Um, some people say that Bad News Brown should have been world champion, but if you see wrestling in the way that I do, um, Bad News Brown, he may be a tough son of a bitch, but in terms of his charisma and, um, you know, his uh, ability to sell merchandise and um, all that type of stuff, um, he was never any more than a mid-card type of guy at best. So, um, you know, a tough son of a bitch. Um, Roddy Piper did say that he was a lousy wrestler, a good judo player, so... Um, you know, maybe he was a tough guy, but just wasn't really a good wrestler. Um, and again, like I say, if you're Vince McMahon, um, this is not a guy who's going to make you a whole bunch of money, um, no matter how tough he is. Um, comes with this little rat accessory. Um, but Bad News Brown, you know, I do remember him, and uh, it's really cool to have an action figure of him. And I'm not 100% sure, but this could be the one and only uh, Bad News Brown action figure there's ever been. I'm not sure. Okay, next we have a, a Mattel um, Elite. Um, this was a San Diego Comic Con, I think 2016, maybe 2017, I can't remember. Exclusive um, Isaac Yankum figure, so... Um, Isaac Yankum eventually became Kane, so obviously Kane has had many action figures. So I do remember Isaac Yankum when I was a kid, kind of in the early to mid 90s. Um, I don't actually remember him having any matches. I don't remember a single match that he was in. You know, obviously he did have matches, but I actually remember the kind of these uh, kind of skits that he was in, these kind of promos, uh, vignettes, whatever you call it, where he's this kind of like a evil bad tempered type of dentist and obviously everybody hates going to the dentist and people fear the dentist um, but I always thought it was kind of a crappy gimmick for a wrestler to be a, a dentist um, you know uh, <clears throat> but like I say I do remember him from when I was a kid so it's cool to have an action figure of him um, you know, as a action figure collector, I mean, this is the kind of thing that I do like to see. These kind of unusual versions of uh, guys, especially when they became um, a lot more successful. So obviously Kane is awesome. Isaac Yankum, not so awesome, but um, I do like this figure. Comes with his headgear. You know, he's got like his uh, like a removable T-shirt, and um, you know, he's actually got a. Uh, these kind of yellow teeth as well like uh, so even though he's a dentist um, he obviously doesn't go to the dentist himself and this could be the one and only Isaac Yankum figure that there's ever been okay here we have a uh, this is a WCW Galoob um, this is a UK exclusive um, figure um, this is Dustin Rhodes. So Dustin Rhodes eventually became Gold Dust. Again, Gold Dust has had many action figures, but I'm not 100% sure this could be the one and only um, Dustin Rhodes action figure that there has ever been. I can't think of any others. 
Okay, so here we have three guys who have had multiple action figures, but um, we've got Hulk Hogan, um, a young Hulk Hogan. So Hulk Hogan has had uh, you know many action figures, you know probably over a hundred action figures. I don't know. I mean, I I must have at least thirty Hulk Hogan action figures in my collection. Um, you know, maybe more than forty. I'm not sure. I've never counted. But um, this is uh, this is a Jax. Uh, this is actually from when after Jax lost the uh, license to make WWE figures, they were making TNA figures. So this is kind of like one of their uh, the the Jax Legends figures uh, from when they were doing TNA figures. But this is a young Hulk Hogan, an unusual version of Hulk Hogan. Probably the only. Uh, version of this Hulk Hogan has ever been so this is kind of uh, you know he's got this Japanese uh, symbol on his trunks I don't know what that means but this is Hulk Hogan from when he was uh, wrestling in Japan you know he's got the black trunks black knee pads uh, white boots he was probably a heel at this time as opposed to being a baby face this would have been before he became the WWF world champion before he came became the uh, the legend that he is now, um, and before he became the uh, the biggest icon uh, in the world of wrestling that he is now, he's got a full head of hair, like I say. Um, and this is probably the one and only, uh, you know, Hulk Hogan Japan figure that there's ever been. So um, this is kind of cool. I couldn't resist this one. Um, it was cheap as fuck, which is why I got it, but, um, yeah, cool figure to add to my collection of Hulk Hogan figures, and, um, <clears throat> like I say, these kind of young versions of Hulk Hogan, you usually see them in the red and yellow, or the NWO, black and white, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, a very unusual version of Hulk Hogan. And uh, most people will not know Hulk Hogan from this era. And next we got Sergeant Slaughter. And we've got Colonel Mustafa, who's uh, previously known as the Iron Sheik. So um, Sergeant Slaughter's had multiple action figures. Uh, the Iron Sheik has had multiple action figures. But as far as I know, um, I'm not sure if these two guys... Um, as a tag team had a collective name they're just kind of known as like the Iraqis so uh, you know this was during the Gulf War in the early 90s so um, you got Sergeant Slaughter who was kind of like an American soldier you know a drill sergeant type of character who became uh, kind of an Iraqi sympathizer and then you've got the Iron Sheik who is actually from Iran but he's playing this uh, Colonel Mustafa like an Iraqi uh, type of guy so obviously these guys during the Iraqi war were really hated you know um, there was a lot of heat um, but it was very clever for the WWF to have these kind of uh, guys who were kind of like Iraqi um, characters uh, so um, I'm not 100% sure if there's ever been um, figures of uh, Sergeant Slaughter and Colonel Mustafa as the Iraqis, but um, you know these are you know these are really cool figures uh, made by uh, Jack's Classic Superstars. This was a two-pack. Um, so you got Sergeant Slaughter. You know they got their kind of uh, I know Arab fucking tea towel things on their head um you know they're kind of like iraqi uh outfits um you know their uh their attire did change as well from time to time um but yeah an, an unusual version of uh sergeant slaughter and um colonel mustafa uh the iron sheik um like i say these guys were so hated They've got to be uh, two of the most hated heels of all time. So, um, you know, not just uh, in America, but um, all around the world, you know. Um, I, I believe, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, there was British soldiers involved in the Iraqi war as well. And, you know, a lot of those died. And, you know, these guys were just on an international scale, just really hated. And, um, 
like I say, they're actually pretty nice guys, so you know, you don't actually really need to hate them, but um the WWF was very clever in uh, you know, creating this uh team, these characters. Um but correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if there ever was um a Sergeant Slaughter and Colonel Mustafa tag team figures, you know, as the Iraqis, but um as far as I know there wasn't and um so that's part three of my uh wrestlers who have only ever had one action figure or uh unique versions of uh guys who may have had many action figures. So um and I just like to say thank you for watching.